soap, an essay about soap. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? I love capitalism. Change things up a bit. Hi, hello, it's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, hello, welcome to today's sponsor, me. I wrote this book, available on my big cartel linked downstairs. But yes, I wrote this book, Adolescence Leaves by me, Nathan. You know, people tell me it makes a great coaster. You know, it, it just sits and looks pretty in the corner of your dusty bookshelf. Great addition. I highly recommend it. You know, can you imagine a cup of coffee on top, iced tea, a mug right there. Mix of prose, poetry, fragmentary to tell a story set between LA and Tokyo about memory and loss. Please buy it. Use code SEXYNOOKER10 to get 10% off your purchase. Okay, thanks. Love ya. September has come to a close. And wow, I mean, I always forget September is quite short, like 30 days. And I don't know. I don't know why one day makes a difference, but it really does. I will be honest, September was odd. It was odd. I don't think I did too much reading, but I did do a lot of reading in August, so it makes sense that September sort of slowed down for me. But yeah, September was odd. I did do some books. Let's talk about them. As always, these will be flash reviews of the things I've read, as in future vlogs you'll get more in-depth reviews of these books. Okay, let's start. We'll preface that for September I did a bunch of Didion's, so I started off the month with Salvador by Joan Didion. This is her looking at Salvador through the 80s. This is an interesting take on journalism, given that it's hard to paint a picture of a country that you only spent two weeks in, and in the people and places that you were in company with, there's a sense of privilege in it. But I think Didion does a very good job of capturing the political and almost terrorist-esque environment that Salvador was in during the time she was writing this reportage. And we'll tell you, by the end, she swooped me, she swooped me good with a very heart-pounding ending and honest account of her sentiments and America sentiments in regards to the relationship with Salvador. Then I decided to try one of her fictions. We did The Last Thing He Wanted. This is a... Honestly, what is this? <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, we're dealing with Elena McMahon, who leaves a presidential campaign and then is involved with sort of her father's deals and the book takes on this sort of this turbulent circular typhoonish movement in trying to figure out what her dad's deals were um, involved with too much money drugs weapons who knows but I'll get back to this sort of style later this was this was okay Didion gets away with telling a really good story with her prose, and you can see how she manages that through one of her fictions, I like this one. And then I moved on to Democracy, which again is sort of told in this circular motion where you get one detail and then you leave off on a tangent and then come back to that one detail. And I think it was better done in this book than it was in this one. I want to say I really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would, given that it's also quite personal. She makes a character of herself in this book, so she's one of her own characters here, and you, she reveals a lot actually about herself as a writer, and that's one of the things that I'm always obsessed about with one of my favorite writers, so to see Didion sort of confess and flesh out herself through fiction um, was interesting in this one, and a lot of people won't like this one, but as a personal favorite, and because I'm biased, this this was just, it was good, it was good. 
after that, I got kind of tired <laughs> of reading so many Didions at once. So changed things up a bit and then picked up Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. <sighs> Whoa, y'all, let me tell you, I love Sheila Hetty. She just does diet philosophy so freaking well. Just the way that she incorporates these little musings on life and all of the big questions done in such like quiet, precious ways was so brilliant in this. I enjoyed this a lot. Thank you, Yena, for gifting me this. I have re I read like a bunch of books on mothering and same in sort of the movies that I watched that this was just really interesting to jump back into and to see how all these like themes on motherhood and mothering have followed me from August. All done through sort of the gimmick of the flip of a coin and answers the big life questions that our narrator has here. Yeah, not once was I ever bored, even though this book is literally about nothing. It literally just exists within the head of this woman and also in the conversations that she interacts with, with uh, friends and family who are convincing her to be a mother when that's not what she wants. And talks about also the mothering that exists outside of motherhood. So brilliantly done. And I also got her ARC of Alphabetical Diaries. I know some uh, faves are reading it right now. Ben, love you, Ben, and Renee from So I Read This Book. I can't wait to get into that one. Sheila Hetty slaps. I love her. Okay, so we go back to Didion with this essay collection after Henry. And these are sort of all of the journalistic work she was doing after her husband passed away and she kept busy she kept busy and here we span across la and new york and sort of all the odd ways that la has become she ends in new york but most of the book revolves around sort of the becomings of modern day la and the creation of the la times and the freeways and highways and what it means to be in the business and also uh, the livelihood of writers. It's so interesting that writers have gone on strike now and have gone on strike then. And, you know, writers just are, they never win. They never win. They can never catch a break. She, she paints that pretty picture here. But yes, this is actually quite a very good, strong collection of essays surrounding LA. So if you are like me and you enjoy the nonsense of how LA exists and all of these like weird wacky details like just talk about real estate in LA and don't ask me why but I was invested I was invested that was some good stuff I think one of her lesser known essay collections that should get a bit more love but yes then as some of y'all know I had lost this on a train a, a, a month or two ago I think it was August but I purchased another copy and I finally finished it because we are Priscilla ready. We are ready for that Sofia Coppola movie. Oof, there are some moments in here and about a girl becoming, what it means to be a teenage girl and growing up. Because if y'all didn't know, Priscilla met Elvis when she was 14. Like she started dating him at 14, which is kind of crazy. But there are just these very confessional and open ways where Priscilla is really vulnerable in describing her girlhood while also describing sort of the sexual intimacies that they had together. Um, we'll show this one bit they loved to role play. Kind of kinky. Vanilla, but still kinky. There are moments in this book where I can totally see how Sofia Coppola will paint Priscilla's portrait. Um, there are moments in Vegas and to like, I don't think Sofia Coppola has ever set any of her movies in Vegas, but it makes total sense. Like just the aesthetic of Vegas and at night and the neon lights and everything, it just makes sense. And I'm really excited to see how she fleshes out the film because uh, Priscilla doesn't offer enough of herself in this book. Though she talks about moments shared with Elvis, really the book should be called Elvis, comma, and me. Because there's so little of Priscilla and I hope in the film, Sofia Coppola will do a fabulous job of um, better painting her intimate moments. But y'all can relate to Priscilla. She she does talk about girlhood a bit, and um, yeah, for all you for all you sad girlies out there, this is a good one. Okay, and then I did this run of like really tiny reads. I don't have the books with me because I finished them all at a bookstore in a span of like 
two hours, an hour and a half or so. So I was at my, one of my favorite bookstores in Seoul and I finished three books. I finished Baroness Elsa's M Dashes by Astrid Seme. And this is literally a love letter to the M Dash. So if you are obsessed with the M Dash, you will love this through pictures of different M Dashes and technical, political, poetic, and philosophical ways that the M Dash exists. It is the perfect punctuation mark. Like it does everything. And yep, of course, there's mentions of Emily Dickinson and the way that she used the M Dash. It's a cute, fun read. Lots of rereadability to it in its short form factor and how much it has to offer. Then I read Machines Will Make Better Choices Than Humans by Douglas Coupland. This is a collection of three essays that sort of look at an app and how it is becoming human in the ways that it is modern man's new best friend, if you will. And I think this is a really interesting book given that like AI metaverse world didn't exist yet. So I'm pretty sure like when, you know, metaverse was first announced, Kupun was like, I, I told y'all, I told y'all. And, and he was right, he was right. But sort of breaks down the idea that these apps and how they collect data are collecting so much of ourselves. He has this like tiny cute hypothesis of like, what if the app can eventually collect all of our souls and basically the humane aspects of the self. And yeah, it's cute, it's cute cute read. This was published in 2016. So he was already thinking about the metaverse and all of the, the ways that like technology can sort of mimic the way that all of us collect data from each other and like information wise in the very heavy information based world. So uh, quite, quite a fun read if you are a fan of Douglas Coupland. I think he's one of, one of the greatest social critics of um, our modern day world. Yeah. Then I read Tom's Day Out by Lai Yu Tong. This well, is, comes from Singapore, I believe. Very cute book. It's 32 pages uh, paired with cute paintings of broken down cars in the middle of roads. But it's about this little boy Tom and he's walking with his uncle through a post-apocalyptic world. And they're just pointing at cars and being like, that one's cool, that's cool. And the uncle's like, oh, I remember this car and blah, 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 blah validates all the materialistic purchases I've ever made in my life. Good to know that in a post-apocalyptic world that my material possessions still mean something. Mm, I love capitalism, but very cute. Just looks at the fascination of what survives, what exists after a world that is destroyed. It kind of plays out like a children's book, but there's this underlying eeriness to it that is beautiful, whimsical, and cute. Just a really cute read. Like, give this to little children for, for Christmas. Like, they'll, they'll get freaked out, but not understand why. So, if that's, if that's what you want to do. Okay, after that, I finish Roland Barthes' Mythologies. Did this as a buddy read with Alex from I'm Alex on Instagram. I'll leave his handle down below. This is so dry, so, so dry. My first Barthes and the wrong place to start, but sort of looks at the ways in which parts of our pop culture are mythologized and exist within this fraudulent reality, fraudulent truth, and why they exist. For Barthes during, I wanna say, what is it? The, yeah, over the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But y'all, there's, there's an essay literally about soap. Like, I kid you not, this was a collection of essays that were like fluffs in newspapers and he was just paid to just like insert fluff to, you know, make word count for the papers. A lot of these myths, some hit, there's I think two or three essays about food and drink um, involved in French culture that I think were brilliant. There's also a really great essay on Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times that I think was really good, uh, plays well into his ideas of mythologies and the mythologies we make for ourselves. And then, yeah, sort of the last essay is basically just too much. It does too much. And there's a lot of jargon in there that really just says a lot of nothing, proves that the essays just stretched too far in his thought process. Soap, an essay about soap. 
What the hell am I supposed to do with that? Anyway. Okay, why is the salary man carrying a surfboard by Rei Masaki? This looks at how Japanese advertisement and media have appropriated um, Western ideals and aesthetics for some of the wrong reasons um, and why and where that comes from. But it mostly acts as like a handbook for these Japanese companies so that they, they don't make uh, any appropriation mistakes but he does a fine job of creating a sort of one-on-one -on -one crash course of social justice issues and sort of the aesthetics that emerge from it. What I want to say is like black identity and black culture and how some of those pieces of culture are appropriated in Japanese advertisement and media in terms of like anime and manga and everything and how it was all done for the wrong reasons. So I think the book does a very good job of creating an introduction to everything there isn't really a how in how Japan can solve these issues. Masaki only presents the introductory issues at hand. And though that's fine, I'm just, you know, kind of sick of it, you know? I'm sick of like essays where they'll say what's wrong with the world and not like offer any kind of ways in which we can fix things. It doesn't make any sense. Like save those between you and your friends over, you know, a round of beers or something. But like, if it doesn't offer any ways in which we should fix the world, then make it a TikTok <laughs> or something. But like for the format of a book, I, I need something to work with. I need something to work with. Okay, and last book, last book of the month is Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. I will not say anything about this book because Roshin and I will be doing a live on the book for Spooky Month. Yeah, end of October. I think she posted the time and date, but yes, look out for it. Read, read along. We'll be sharing our thoughts on the book. And yeah, wowzers, wowzers. This one definitely made up for the lack of spooky reading that I've been having. Yeah, this book just took a turn that was really refreshing and nice, nice. It hit. It was, it was a good one. It was a good spooky read. I enjoyed it. We'll save my thoughts for our lives, so look out for that. And as a quick movie update, I did not do a lot of movies. I did seven movies over the month of September. Uh, watched Purple Noon because of Alain Delon. Like, oh God, I could literally just watch him do nothing and uh, most beautiful man in the world. Kind of rewatched. It's complicated. I've always like seen parts of it, but never in full. So actually sat down with this and damn, I like Baldwin. So weird in the movie. So weird. But love Meryl Streep. I almost forgot her name. And uh, just like the, the house that she lives in is just so, so beautiful. I want to live in it so bad. Oh, her kitchen. Give me that kitchen. Oh, so good. Um, then I watched Theater Camp, which is sort of the schoolhouse rock for theater kids. It was aight. I thought it'd be funnier, but some of the jokes didn't land. But um, if you're a theater kid, I think you'll love this. Next I watched Brink of Life by Igmar Bergman. This is fabulous. It's a story of three women delivering life in a maternity ward in light and shadow, in life and death. And yeah, just like their relationship, the ways they talk to each other and how they interact with each other within this sort of claustrophobic enclosed space is incredible. Yeah, definitely worth your time. And proves that I don't wanna have kids. Ever. Thanks, Bergman, for validating my adulthood feelings. Love ya. Okay, and then I watched Bottoms because what's her face? Because Ayo Adebri is having her glow up moment, and this is just a lot of fun. The lesbians deserve their own super bad, a very wacky super bad, and this is just a lot of fun. Lots of fun. Wacky, wild, and funny. Then I watched Talk to Me. Oof! Spooky season is spookying. This was really good, set in Australia. It's a possession story involving this little hand that you hold on to, and then you sort of enter the spirit world and allow the spirit to enter your own body. And woof, short, sweet, not really sweet, it's a horror movie. Very straight to the point, um, done in a short running time, and it's it's spooky, it delivers. So if you're looking for a really good possession movie, this is, this is a fun one. That's September in a wrap, crazy. I didn't do too much reading. Um, I feel like most of it was occupied with uh, some tiny reads that I just crammed <laughs> into the month. Anyway, 
Let me know how September was for you. Any good, good books? Any faves? Let me know. As always, thanks for being here. I love you. Yeah, let me know what you're reading. As always, I love adding books to my TBR. It's, it's a hobby. It's a hobby at this point. As always, be well, do good work, keep in touch.